is James Raphael and I am a warrior addict, brand warrior. And today in this video we're looking at yoga specifically for cyclists. And if you're a cyclist, whether you're just a kind of occasional cyclist or a very regular cyclist, you may realise that as wonderful as cycling is, often we can end up with quite tight legs, kind of tight in the quads, the hamstrings, the hip flexors. So this sequence is really to help you uh, decompress a little bit from cycling and also as a way to look at injury prevention and rehabilitation if you're cycling quite a lot. So in this uh, video we'll need two props. One is going to be a brick and the other is a strap. If you don't have a brick you could use something like a thick book that's fairly stable and sturdy. And if you don't have a strap, you could use a hand towel instead. But a brick and a strap are going to be really helpful for this video. So to begin with, just thinking about the key issues that you may have as a cyclist, because often we're in that quite low uh, hunched over position, hip flexors get really tight and really strong from the motion. And also you may or may not have some kind of lower back issue going on from being in this position for prolonged periods of time if you're cycling regularly. So it's quite helpful because by its nature being on a bike is quite a closed position to work in a way which we can open through the whole of the front of the body. So that's what we'll be doing a little bit of in this sequence. So to begin, grab your strap or your towel and we're going to start lying down. So find your way to your mat Make sure your back feels comfortable and level. And to begin with, let's take both legs long, arms overhead, and stretch out the whole of the body. And if your hands don't come all the way back, don't worry, bend your elbows, spend a moment here, letting the shoulders release. You might even hold the hands if that helps. Eventually the hands will come down. But again, if they don't, don't worry. Let the arms come overhead. And starting to connect to a slow, deep breath here. And then begin to walk your feet in now. Let's hug the knees into the chest. You have a familiar position. Uh, from having knees quite close into the body when cycling, uh, let's have a little rock side to side, release the spine. And now find centre, right foot down, left knee stays in, link your fingers around the knee, and slowly start to creep your right leg long. And you might take it this far and already feel quite a deep stretch through the front of the hip, or you might take it a little bit further, lengthening the leg completely. Get a sense of your right leg rooting down towards the mat as you draw in the other knee. Right foot is flexed, which means the toes are curling back towards the knee. And let's take a couple circles with the ankle one way, and then the other way. Again, often ankles and knees can get tight or a little unstable, because when we cycle we are working in just one plane of direction all the time. So circular movements in the joints, particularly the ankle, the hip, will be your friend. And uh, then let's release, and we'll switch sides. Right knee comes in. Snuggle close, and then begin to creep the left leg long. And again, you might pause here with the knee a little bent, or you might root the thigh all the way down and flex the foot. Now keep that right knee coming in, and circle the ankle. And then we'll go the other way. And 
and then release. So now, locate your strap. And we're going to take the strap, or a towel if you're working with a hand towel, around the ball of the right foot. So right around the ball, just below the toes. And then give yourself a good amount of strap. And we're going to start to lengthen the leg forwards. So rather than taking it up straight away, lengthen the leg forwards first. And so the leg becomes straight. And now, once the leg is straight, then start to draw the leg up. So you start to feel stretched in the back of the hamstrings. So you might be a little lower down if you're a bit tight today. Maybe if you have room, leg is coming up a little bit higher. If you have the room, you might take a little bit more slack with the strap. And check here. See, if your toes have turned out, often our foot turns out to the side, makes it a little bit easier because it takes the pressure off the mid hamstrings. Instead, keep the inside edge of your top foot a bit of straight line down the middle of your mat. Then optionally the left leg begins to lengthen, which deepens it. And what I love about this stretch for the back of the legs is that your spine stays long. We're not rounding or hunched over like we often are in a forward fold. Here you have full length from the sitting bone all the way into the back of the knee. And we're going to switch. So take your right hand to the strap. And your left hand can now rest at the hip. And now slowly begin to open the leg to the side. And notice my right elbow is going to come down and create a little prop as I begin to open the leg. Keep the leg straight, and check if your left hip starts to lift off the floor like this, re-root it down, root the left thigh. You'll breathe here, three more deep breaths. And then coming back to centre. And then release the strap. And we're going to switch feet. Strap around the ball of the left foot. And when you're there, lengthen the leg forwards. Leg becomes a little straighter. And then coming up. And again, check that the toes haven't turned out. Inside edge of the foot still in line with the middle of the mat. And it's helpful in these longer holds to really focus on the breath. So you keep coming back to that slow, deep breath. Because the breath itself can create a lot of the stretch, actually. It's the sense of the inhale you notice a little bit the uh, depth. Maybe you lengthen the right leg as well. Keep the shoulders a little relaxed. Strong hands. And now taking the strap into the left hand. Then start to open, right hand to the hip. And then hopefully you don't have a wall close to you like I do, so the leg can go a little bit further over. Your elbow will come down as you open. But equally, if you do have a wall, it can also be helpful as a little prop, particularly if you're feeling a little bit more tight in through the inside of the thigh. And just three more breaths here. And 
spine is long, the shoulders relaxed, and then coming back in. So let's bend the knee, and we'll take the strap off to one side, we'll come back to it later. So for a moment, wiggle the legs long, and kind of releasing into the hips. Then we're going to walk the feet in, and roll to one side to come up. So we're going to come round to the hands and the knees. So spread the fingers and take the tops of the feet down to the mat as this starts to stretch out the ankles a little bit. And as you root downwards with the feet and the hands, breathe in and lift the chest forwards and up. As you breathe out, scoop the belly in and round the back. Inhaling forwards. Exhaling back. And we'll take three more. As you come back, gently press the floor away, spreading the shoulder blades. As you come forwards, shoulders away from the ears, chest open. And then let's just take one more. So we're starting off a little slow, but working with a deep breath as the foundation for this sequence. And now come back to centre. From here, tuck your toes. We're going to sit back towards the heels. Feel the toes begin to stretch open, the soles of the feet open. Press lightly into the hands to send your hips back. And eventually, you may come all the way back onto the heels. But again, chances are if you're a cyclist, your knees uh, are used to working, so maybe a little bit tighter. So you might not be all the way down, and that's fine. And sitting back, spine long. Feeling the depth of that stretch. Okay, so coming forwards now. Begin to slide your right foot back. Press the heel away, lengthen the back of the leg. As the knee presses up, start to find stretch to the back of the calf, back of the hamstrings. And now, turn your right heel down, and we're going to take a little pivot on the left knee, so the foot comes out behind you. This lets you lift up into a side plank position. Spread the arms wide, and start to take your right arm alongside the ear. You can see there's a long line from my heel to my fingers. Start to bring your hand towards your left shoulder. It might even touch. From here, lift the elbow up, start to turn the chest. So we're opening the chest. And then release, coming back down, hands and knees. Slide the left foot back. Press the heel away. And then start to turn the heel flat down to the mat. And pivot, take your right foot behind you, side plank. Spread the arms wide. To the left palm forwards and bring the arm by the ear. And I'm really reaching out all the way from my heel to my fingertips, one long line, and then a hand comes behind the head towards the other shoulder and begin to turn the chest, lift the elbow. So this is really helpful for opening the chest and opening the shoulder, particularly if you do a lot of desk work as well as the cycling, this is kind of the opposite to that hunched position we're often in, shoulder and chest open. And then coming back down. From here, tuck the toes, we'll find down dog. Send your hips up and find a loose shape to begin. 
Don't worry about it being perfect. Hands are as wide as your shoulders, feet as wide as your hips. Keep the knees bent for now. With the knees bent, that lets you send your hips up a little higher to the ceiling, which then opens the shoulders. Send your chest towards your knees. Feel the shoulders start to open. If this is really intense, really tight, you can turn your fingers out slightly on the mat, which gives your shoulders a bit more room. Once your spine is long and the hips are lifted, maybe then you start to straighten the legs. But if you feel your back starting to round like this, come back, keep them a little bent. Long spine first. We're going to move into a little bit of flow. From here, inhale forwards into a plank position. Slide your feet back so you find a long plank. Take a full breath in. And as you breathe out, lower the knees, lower all the way down to the mat. Hands by your shoulders. Press your pelvis down, cobra lifting. Take three breaths here. Shoulders away from ears. Chest lifting forwards and up. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. I'm going to do that again. Inhaling forwards, plank position. Exhale, lower the knees, lower all the way down. Inhale, lift and lengthen the spine. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time. Inhale, plank position. This time, lower down in your plank like one piece of wood. Exhale, flat to the mat. Breathe it in, cobra. Tuck your toes for downward facing dog. Building a little bit on this now. Inhale, lift your right leg up in your down dog. And bend the knee. So bring the heel towards the glute. And now as you exhale, draw the knee into the chest, shoulders above the wrists. And then send it back. We'll take one more, knee comes in. And back. Knee comes in, this time step the foot forwards and down, lower your back knee. It's helpful to grab hold of the ankle or the foot and bring the foot a little bit forwards. Once you're there, climb onto the knee. If you need a little bit of padding for your knee, you could double up your mat or take a towel beneath it. Kneeling position. From here, shoulders soften down and back. And Begin to lift from the front of the pelvis. Imagine you could lift up from the front of your pants. So rather than collapsing into your back, there's a sense of lift and height coming up. Rest your hands on your front thigh. And optionally, begin to lower the pelvis forwards and down. But as you lower the pelvis, keep lifting from the front of the pelvis. So the front part rises, the rest descends. And you'll notice that really deepens the stretch of the front of your left hip flexors. If it feels good, you could even take a little bounce here, kind of pulsing into length with the muscle. And from here now, inhale, lift the arms up. An option to bring the palms together and take the palms behind the head. If you're there, draw the elbows in and up, lift the chest, two full breaths here. And then exhale, release the hands down. From here, lift the back knee up. And we're gonna step back into that plank position. From here, shoulders above the wrists, Either lower flat to your mat or chaturanga. Elbows in, hover. Flip your feet over for cobra or up dog. And flip your feet over again for downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths here. Spreading fingers, spreading toes. The hips lift as the spine lengthens.
Inhale now, lift the left leg. Then bend the knee. On your next breath out, draw the knee into the chest. And as you breathe in, take it back. Then we'll go once more. And we're going a little slow so we really feel the work. We encourage a long breath. This time, step the foot forwards, back knee down. Use your hand if you need to to bring the foot forwards. Kneeling position. Lift up from the front of the pelvis once more. Sit tall. I have a little regal, king-like posture. And maybe now, as you continue to lift at the front, the whole of your pelvis comes forwards and down. Hands rest. And you might pulse a little bit. So hip flexors can get really overly active through cycling, also through running. And when they're overly active, they tend to grip a lot. And that can cause us problems with posture, uncomfortable feeling in the lower back. So this position really helpful to lengthen, particularly muscle called psoas, which you may know, a deep postural muscle. Arms lift. And take the hands behind the head as an option. Elbows lift up and in. Keep lifting the chest, lengthening the lower back. Hands come back down. Lift your back knee, plank position. And lowering through either Chaturanga or all the way down if you prefer. Lift the chest, Cobra, meeting in downward facing dog. Body getting a little warmer now. Keep your knees soft, send your hips high. And maybe now you start to lengthen the legs. Finding a little bit of space in the back of the knee. On your next breath in, lift the right leg. We're going to bend the knee and step the foot forwards. Lower your back knee for a moment if you need to bring the foot towards the hands. But then this time, we're going to rise up into a low lunge position. Arms come overhead. Lower your back heel down, warrior two. Check your front knee is above your front ankle, back toes turned in. From here, turn the front palm up, reversing. And now bring your elbow down onto your knee for side angle. Same as before, top arm comes alongside the ear. Long line through the side of the body. Keep the breath deep, stretching out the side of the ribs and the hip. From here, come back into your warrior two. We're going to take triangle, and it's helpful to take a shorter stance. So you might step your back foot in a little bit, straighten your front leg, and then reach forward with the right hand to go long, 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 long. Get your right side of the waist really long, then your hand just floats down, and it might come to the thigh, or it might come to the shin, resting, spreading the arms. Both legs working to lengthen, working to become straight. Shoulders wide. Keep the breath deep. And you can look forwards or up if that doesn't congest your neck. And then from here, you're going to come back into that short warrior two stance. Take your hands down to the mat, step back through your chaturanga. Cobra or up dog, downward facing dog. Second side, left leg lifts. Big step forwards. Bring the foot between the hands. Rising into a lunge position. Back heel down, warrior two. Front knee above ankle. 
Take a moment to reverse, lift the palm. And bring your elbow onto your knee, side angle. Top arm rising, the long side of the ear. So really search for length all the way through the side of the body. Root into both feet, especially the back one. Slowly coming back, warrior two. Shorten your stance a little bit for triangle. Left hip back, left arm forwards, go long, long, long. Reach for something just out of reach, and then bring the hand down to the thigh or the shin. Top arm lifts. Rotate your chest so the arm can come straight up. One more breath. And then hands back down, step it back, plank position, chaturanga, elbows close. Cobra or up dog, downward facing dog. From here, lift the right leg up. Big step forwards. Back knee is coming down again this time. And it's helpful to pad the knee for this next bit. So double up your mat or take a towel beneath the knee. We're coming kneeling. So option one, we're going to rest our hand on the front thigh and reach back and catch the foot and we'll draw the heel in. Now if your foot is really far away and that's not so easy for you, you can, with a bit of negotiation, take a strap around the ankle. It's a little tricky to lasso yourself and maybe you can draw the foot in like this, heel coming in. So whether you have the strap or the foot, now start to bring the heel in. And remember that action of lifting the front of the pelvis. Could you lift at the front of the pelvis so start to pick up, sit a little tall, a little regal. And that's going to deepen through the front of the hip flexor and the quad this time. If you have more space, you might bring your elbow down and the heel in closer. And if you still have a little more space, the pelvis may come forwards and down further. Eventually heel coming all the way in, quite deep. Wherever you are breathing there, keep the heel coming in. And notice if you relax, if you take off the, the, pedal, the foot off the pedal, as it were, and kind of collapse into your lower back, you don't get as much of a stretch, so keep lifting through front rim of the pelvis, and now release, tuck your back toes and bring your fingertips down to the mat. We're going to sit back towards the left heel, walk your hands closer as you start to straighten the front leg. And you might be working here, or you might sit back a little bit further, and eventually folding down front of the body long, stretching out back of the right leg. One more breath, then coming back. From here, hands down, and step it back, downward dog. Left leg lifts, lightly step forwards, lower the back knee down, pad up if you need to. Kneeling position. Sit tall, find lift through the front. Either use your strap or catch the right foot. Draw the heel in to deepen. Lift the front of the pelvis. It's as though someone could pull you up from the front seam of your pants. So rather than being here and collapsed, there's a little lift 
and the lower back lengthens. Maybe you take the elbow down to progress, or maybe you lower forwards a little bit further. Two more deep breaths here. Release the foot, tuck the toes, and we start to creep back to sit towards the heel. As you sit back, take your hands a bit further with you. You might be higher up, or you might be lower down. Either way, keep drawing your left hip back to lengthen. slowly coming forwards, stepping back, downward facing dog, optionally you might take chaturanga, cobra or up dog, and downward facing dog. From here bend the knees and walk the hands and feet towards each other, deep fold in the knees, Catch the elbows, take a little rock side to side. Release the hands and we're going to slowly come up, coming all the way up. And now from here, step your feet wide across the mat. So we're going to take the legs quite wide, toes turn in, hands to the hips. Breathe in, lift the chest. And as you breathe out, start to fold forwards, send your hips back, and bring your fingertips down towards the mat. If the mat is a little far away, you could use a block or your book or a prop. Once you're there, start to gently press the thighs back away from you so the legs straighten. Torso long, and the breath deep. If you have more room, you could bring the palms down. Eventually the palms walk in line with the heels. You fold all the way down, head towards the mat. Whether you're here or here, still working into the backs of the legs, opening the knees. Two more breaths. and then bring your hands back to your hips, slowly come up. So we're going to need a strap for the ne this next bit. So bring your legs back to where they were, but this time take the strap behind you, I'm going to hold the strap, and then as you fold, bring the arms overhead. So the arms are going to come rising over as you fold forwards and down. Keep lifting the shoulders away from the ears, hands up. And as you fold, the arms come higher. But just taking it to where you feel depth through the back of the legs and through the shoulders. Three more breaths here. slowly coming up. Release your strap and then we're going to come back down to the mat. So from here we're going to come to sit and uh, we'll move the strap again. So you could be kneeling, but the chances are if you're a cyclist this is quite intense. <laughs> if you're good here stay kneeling otherwise it might be helpful to come into cross-legged position, maybe sit up on something. I'm going to open into the shoulders a little bit more. Take your strap, 
and hold it in the right hand. And your left hand is going to come round and catch the strap. And the hands walk together. So keep the fingers walking in towards each other, holding the strap. Now, if you'd like to deepen a little bit, draw your ribs in. So if you arch your back, it's easier to actually get the hands close, but you cheat yourself out of the shoulder stretch. So draw your ribs in, long spine. Two more breaths. And then release. Give the shoulders a little wiggle out. We'll take that to the other side. So, left hand comes up. And then right hand behind. And the hands walk towards each other. So we find deep stretch. And if you notice that one side is really tight compared to the other, that's totally normal. Uh, most people have one shoulder which is much more open than the other. But if we do this exercise repeatedly, we start to find a little balance. Keep the ribs in. Keep the spine tall. And then slowly come out. So release the strap. So our final pose before we lie down is a pose or variations of a pose called camel. And it's really effective for opening the whole of the front of the body and the shoulders, which is going to be great. So come round and we're going to come to a kneeling position. And again, pad your knees up if that's helpful. Tuck your toes. From here, sit tall. But once again, that same cue, lift the front of the pelvis up. And you'll notice your glutes engage as you do that. It's almost like you're tucking the tailbone a little bit, very gently, lifting, glutes a little active. And now, take the heels of your palms behind to rest at the lower back, fingers face down. Lift your chest, and gently take your pelvis forward as you lean back into the hands. Long through the throat, chest open. Two more breaths. And then coming back. So you might take a moment for a little bit of a breather. And then we're going to come in one more time. So this time, you might work here, or you might take one hand down towards the heel. Maybe you bring the fingertips onto the heel. You might do one side at a time. Or if you're a little more open, you might take both hands down to the heel. Wherever you are, take the pelvis forwards, lift the front of the pelvis up, and lift the chest up. Optionally, you may even take the head back if both hands are down. One more deep breath, wherever you are. Bring the hands back. And take a moment to come to the hands and knees. With the spine, a little bit of wiggle out, a bit of movement. And then we're going to come back around. So from here, we're going to lie down. And we're going to take our strap and once more take it around the ball of the right foot to finish. Your left leg is long and now take the strap into the left hand. So with the strap in your left hand, take your right hand either to the floor next to you to stabilise 
or you might take it into the hip. Your thumb comes into the hip, gives you a little bit of support. Then we're going to cross the leg over the body. So keep the leg straight and bring it straight across. And so this is an excellent stretch for IT band and the outer hip. And you might have the leg a little higher if this is really intense. Or maybe you explore lowering the foot over and a little higher up. Now notice with my right hand, because it's on the hip, I'm going to actually help draw my hip back slightly. And that helps to create a little bit more length. Take a few breaths here. take that to the other side. So I'm going to flip myself around so my left leg can come out. But again, it's not always to have, always bad to have a wall nearby because as you bring the leg over you can rest the foot on the wall if you need a little support. Strap in the right hand, left hand at the hip or the floor, crossing over. You can really use that other hand, the left one, to draw the hip back a little bit, back towards the floor. So you're stretching the leg from both ends. in. Let's release the strap. Send your legs long. Give them a little bit of a wiggle. And we'll find our way into Shavasana. Palms turn up so the chest and the shoulders are more open. Legs long. Take a deep breath in. And release out. You might spend a minute or two, or maybe beyond five minutes here, to complete the practice. <laughs> 